Pieces, it's me, Beth B. Diamond Paints. Today I'm going to show you how I personally work on special drill diamond paintings. I've been doing a lot of them lately and I decided that maybe I should make a video and throw in some tips and tricks and stuff that I do that might make me different than the typical partial diamond painter or partial special drill diamond painter. So before we get started, if you're new here, go ahead and smash the subscribe button. I post new videos about diamond painting on a regular basis, like four or five weeks. I would say. Um, anyways, so let's get started. This is the cat that I'm working on. Look at his face. Isn't it cute? And then it has those peacock drills. I like to call these peacock drills just because I did a peacock once and that's what they remind me of forever. Um, I have most of it completed except for a little square area, which I'm going to show you in a moment, but that is how much I've completed so far. It's turning out really pretty. I'm really happy with this one. So on this canvas, the legend only came, only came on one side, one corner, and it is a pretty big canvas. I believe it's like 30, 40 by 50 or something like that. So I ended up cutting out the legend so that when I was working on the lower end of it, of the canvas, I could see the legend. So here I just put this legend in with the peacock drills because I didn't want to lose it. And I knew if this thing was just flopping around on my desk, I was going to lose it. So when I work on partials, all I do is I leave the clear plastic because, um, I don't know, it's just easier. And you'll notice that uh, when you work on partials or special drill diamond paintings, there's not always going to be glue everywhere. There's only going to be glue in the drill areas. So I just leave the clear plastic and I cut it as I go. This one I worked in six sections. So I cut, I used, I did, let me sh higher it up a bit. I basically just cut it down the middle and then I cut off the sections as I went. And so now I just have this square area to complete. Uh, one thing that I will say is that it's easier if you leave this and you don't switch it out with, with release paper. I don't know why, but for some reason it is. And I like being able to um, use the use the clear plastic as a resting spot for my hand as I go and I like being able to lift it because there's going to be drills in random places like so let's say I was just doing uh, this symbol here this red arrow um, there's going to be drills that go all the way up here and then here and here So I just like being able to have a spot to rest my hand to rest my tray because the closer my tray is to where I'm putting down the drills the faster I end up drilling So let's get started. Um, I'm going to be doing the bottom down here I have everything kitted up very simply in this small container. I don't use my Elizabeth Ward or um, another way of kidding up when I do partials or I do special drills. So I keep calling special drills partials. They are partials, but they're special drills. But I just use this container because I don't need a huge Elizabeth Ward because they're usually under like 20 colors. They're usually like 15 to 20 colors. So I'm going to do number A, which is number seven. They come with these really pretty, pretty, pretty gold ones and so I think what differentiates how I diamond paint with uh, special drills is most people use tweezers to put down their drills these are these really nice gold ones I got from Mary's Diamonds look how blingy they are um, most people use tweezers so they'll go like this I'm horrible at it they'll go like I can't even show you yeah I can they'll go like that and then they'll put it down and they'll do one diamond at a time I don't have patience for tweezers because I like to diamond paint fast. Uh, I'm not a perfectionist by all means. Like I will just get the drill down in the spot and move on. I don't like worry about it being perfectly placed or anything like that. So I don't use tweezers at all when I do partials. What I do use though, because partial or special drills, sorry, when I do special drills, um, I use a three placer. So this is just a three placer on my Daft Designs pen. Um, and I just use it to pick up the drills because a single placer isn't going to pick up 
necessarily pick up these big drills. Sometimes you can get away with a single placer picking up these bigger odd shaped drills, but most of the time a three placer will work. And in my three placer, I just have some of this root beer putty from Sensible by Design. I really like using putty when I do special drills because they're, it's just stickier and for some reason it just works better. It also helps if you're doing special drills and you ha and you are using putty if you, you leave extra at the top. So I didn't leave, I left extra at the top but now it's like all pushed back into the pen. But if you do leave a bit of extra sticking out, um, it will pick up the drills a lot easier and it won't leave residue either. So I just pick them up like that and then I put them down. So essentially I'm using the three placer as a single placer for special drills. And if you're lucky, sometimes you can pick up two drills at a time and then you can use your three-placer as a two-placer multi-placer. So that is just how I diamond paint faster. Like I have to do this whole row and then this whole row of the A's. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll go through this small section and I'll find anywhere where there's A's that are in here and if there are I'll put down the A's so there's A's all along here I'll put those down and then I'll move on to another color. It's just a lot easier to do work in sections when I do special drills instead of going row by row or like smaller section my smaller section I work in larger sections because it goes a lot faster and it's just it makes more sense because with special drills you'll be switching drills a lot. Um, it's kind of like confetti, but more fun than confetti because you get to work with like really fun drills like these ones. These are really pretty. Now I have to try and get them back in the container. Oh, and that's another thing as well. Um, when you're doing special drill diamond paintings and you're pouring things back into the container, let's say here, um, it's not so much these ones actually. When you are doing special drills, you want to make sure that when you're pouring things back into the container, you're not pouring things over top of your the area that you've already drilled. You want to pour them over if there's an area that has plastic or the area kind of you're working on or off to the side on your desk because if these drills fall into the spots where you've already drilled, they're a huge annoyance to try and get out of those spots because they'll fall within they'll fall between uh, different sections or rows or columns, whatever you want to call them. And then you have to kind of fish them out with tweezers or with your single placer. So it's really annoying. So make sure when you're pouring drills back into your containers, you're doing it over plastic or your desk and not over the area you've already done or drilled. Another thing is when I finish a section, I take my roller and I lightly, like I don't press hard, I just very lightly run it across the area that I've already drilled. And this just makes sure that all of them are kind of stuck down. And you'll notice too with special drill diamond paintings, uh, the glue is really good. Usually there's a large amount of glue in the spots that you're drilling, so you won't really find any diamonds falling off, but I still want to roll over it just to make sure that the area is all pressed down and everything is kind of in the where it needs to be. Uh, another thing is you can actually multi-place when you're using special drill diamond painting. So let's do, we'll do this red arrow. I don't know if you can see it or not. We'll do this whole row here or this column. So that is number one. I use a tray like this as well. This is another good tip. So if you use a tray like this, you can get away with pouring out these bigger drills because it doesn't really line them up as very, as well but um, when you're, the spout is like very wide, so you can pour those in versus if you're using a drill tray like this that has a little spout area or funnel area, um, your drills are going to get stuck in here and then you'll end up having to pour them out the corner and that's not as easy as it seems. So yeah, I just use 
this tray. This tray is from a Canadian seller. I'll put the link in the description below. I can't remember what they're called, but let's get to this red arrow here. And I'll show you how I multi-place. Oops, see? And then you spill drills in the drilled area. Oh, okay, I'm lucky. It wasn't that bad, okay. Can I even diamond paint? Do I diamond paint? I suck, okay. So, if you're doing a straight line, you can get away with using a larger multi-placer than a three-placer. Um, and you'll notice that they're not as tightly, they're not as tightly um, grouped together, I guess. So they're not necessarily touching. So you'll want to make sure that you leave, that you don't put them down too tight, like when you're drilling, if that makes sense. So I usually will put down a couple and as I'm going, I'll slide my multi-placer when I'm putting them down so that it matches up to the, the drill spot. So I just lightly slide my multi-placer. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I am sliding it. And it kind of just drags everything into place. So while you can use a 15 placer if you did want to for this section, um, it's just recommended that you do not because you'll have a harder time sliding the drills. Does that help? I just turned the light on. That helps a little bit. And there you go. I missed one. So, okay. And then if you're doing a curved area, so this area is curved, I like to use just the three placer and I'll just kind of push the pen. Again, I'll, I'll slightly like, if you're doing straight, you're just like pushing down this way. But if I'm doing curved, I'll slightly curve the pen as I'm going. Then if you see anything that's out of line, you just go back. Like I will usually do the entire row or column or whatever it is, or the entire curve, and then I'll go back and straighten out any drills that aren't sitting properly. So you, like with a special drill diamond painting, I think people expect that they have to do them all one at a time, like with a single placer, but you don't have to. Get creative, use a three placer, four placer, whatever floats your boat. Usually I find anything more than a six placer is too much for multi-placing. So I usually just stick with the three placer or if I have a four placer, I'll use a four placer. But for the most part, working on curves, a three placer is probably max what you wanna use because of the way the drills are, you have to lay out the drills. Yeah, so that's how I just did like this whole thing here. Oh, what else can I show you? Let me put these back and I'm pouring over the area that has plastic because I don't want to get these drills stuck where I in the drill field. Um, when I work with smaller kits, smaller storage containers like this, I like to either dump the extras in the bottom like the empty boxes or the empty squares or I like to keep the extras in their bags I don't like having multiple things of four I just I literally just these are out of order I literally just uh, have like this I put tape and then I numbered them 1 to 16 because usually I don't have more than 16 for your special drills so I literally just leave these labels on here and we'll just empty them out after I'm done. I do keep all my partial drills or special drills because they're they're special and they're different. So you never know when you might need them later on if you're really into doing special drills or you can also use them for highlighting areas in your normal diamond paintings. Um, and people buy these as well. Like I think they're called crystal drills or something like that, but I, I have a whole bunch of leftover ones from previous special drill canvases I've done. So I don't actually have to buy them because I've saved them, which is awesome. And there's like all the different shapes. I really like the idea of maybe one day just doing a random diamond painting and putting in special shapes around uh, the canvas and stuff like that. So 
I think that saving your your special drills is a really great idea. If you don't have room for them, then you don't have room for them. Um, but I like saving them. And I think, I think that's all I wanted to show you guys. I don't think that I'm missing anything. But if you do have questions about doing special drill diamond paintings, leave them in the comments below. If you have any tips to share with people, leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, go ahead and smash the subscribe button. I post diamond painting videos on a regular basis, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Okay, bye!